breaking down. As W.C. Fields once said, a thing worth having is a thing worth cheating for. Or as Mark Grace of the Chicago Cubs once said, if you ain't cheating, then you ain't trying. Everybody understands why a kid would want to cheat on the SATs, right? They have huge gains of being able to get into Stanford or Harvard and, and have a good life as a result of cheating on a test, okay? What's harder to think is why would a teacher cheat for a kid on a test? And yet when you go to Chicago and you look back a few years ago, we find that lots and lots of teachers were cheating. Well, why were they cheating? Well, because there's tremendous pressure on these teachers to produce high test scores so that their schools wouldn't get into trouble. First of all, it's, it's very expedient to go to the end of the test. Because at the end of the test, a lot of kids have left things blank. So instead of having to erase something and fill it back in, you can just fill in the answers. Now, it might look kind of funny, because how often when kids take a test, do they answer the first 20 questions, leave 17 questions blank, and then fill in the last eight questions, okay? And even maybe a little funnier when they fill in the last eight questions and they get all the questions right. And those just happen to be the hardest questions on the exam. When I got the data from the Chicago Public Schools, I mean, we were talking about millions and millions of answers by thousands of kids over years and years. And I looked at the data, and I couldn't see anything. I mean, how could you ever see anything? If you can think like a teacher who cheats and then look again at the sea of data, these patterns come to light. Patterns, which are subtle, that are buried in mounds and mounds of data, when looked at just through the bright lens, suddenly it's just as clear as day. And once you know what to look for, you can't help but say this has to be cheating. What he's really good at is like pretending he's a cheater and a criminal and a thief and a cheat and all these things because really he's not that far from. I mean, if you think about what an economist is, the line between like economist and criminal is incredibly thin. And what about journalists? No line. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because he can put himself in the shoes of someone who would behave criminally or who's a cheater, then you can kind of back up the process and reverse engineer it. And that's what you have to do, because unless you're in the room with cheaters, it's really hard to catch them. It's not that some people cheat in every setting or some people never cheat. It's, it's, we all cheat sometimes and not others. I mean, everyone's got their own moral compass that determines what they'll do and what they won't do.